Welcome friends, this is Tim at Brew Bros coming at you with Dr. John Kimball straight out of the lab. <laughs> My name is John Kimball. I was going to say welcome to the lab, but you took the lab joke. <laughs> you can still say that if you want. Welcome to the lab. There we go. <laughs> uh, recently I did a video and it included part from Graham Wheeler's book on brewing British cast beers where he made some fairly disparaging comments about uh, packaged yeast mm. at home brewer level, particularly dried yeast, and the importance of making a yeast starter. And that coincided with someone emailing in saying, how do you make a yeast starter? So we thought we would do a video. Mm. Dr. Sounds John, good. why would one want to make a yeast starter? Good question, Tim. Shoot. Uh, yeah, no, very good question. Uh, to, and the answer to, is? To give yourself the <laughs> best, healthiest yeast you, you can possibly get, really. Um, but you can also start off with one packet of yeast, yeah. and you can multiply that massively. Um, you can start off with one packet, which is typically the, the date of production. They're generally sort of 100 billion cells. Uh, there's imperial yeast. They, I think they're 200 billion cells in theirs, but it doesn't really matter. If you, you've got a pack of yeast, once you've got some DME, some water, you can, you can multiply that massively okay. in very short amount of time, really. And just ensure that it's as healthy as it can be and is ready to exactly so once you introduce in. it yeah when you introduce it to your work you've got very little lag time and it's 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 raring to go and it'll be bubbling away within hours <laughs> i asked you the other day because i i've, I've recently bought a oh, you haven't got it on show yet the work whiffer no no well it's yours isn't it i don't want to i'll bring that over in a minute i've got my one over there as well the homemade one but i asked you the question about counting yeast cells because you used to use a microscope yeah i obsessed with it for a while but I, I don't think you need to anymore. Okay. Certainly not on this kind of level. Certainly not. No, I mean, I bought a microscope and a, a, the hemocytometer slides and everything, and I was there with a little trick of counting the cells. Dr. John's also a volcanologist. You don't but, need you to know. do that. I think there's so many brewing calculators out there when you know the, the production date of your yeast when it's manufactured. It's normally got a best before date now. For some reason, they've got rid of the manufacture dates, but it's, yeah, yeah. The, the manufacture date is normally six months prior to the best before date. Yeah. Um, once you know that, you know the viability and you know, generally the health of the yeast. Um, which gives you the starting point, and then you can work out roughly how many billion cells you're going to get from that yeast once you've introduced it to the yep. starch and let it do its thing for a day and a half or whatever. Okay. So you, so people to calculate their cells, that's an online calculator? Yeah. Yeah, there's loads out there. The one I use is actually the one on the, uh, the Malt Miller website. Mm -hmm. which, um, it's really helpful. Really good. Cal they've got loads of calculators on there. Yeah, they are really good. Uh, and that's the, I think it's just called the yeast calculator, where you go along to their little Bruce Friend's section. got one too, isn't it? Brewer's Brewer's friend. Friend. Yeah, I haven't yeah. used that one for a while. I know, I know they make Brewfather? one. Brewfather? That must have one. Brewfather? Yeah, of course it does. I, yeah. I pay for Brewfather, but I don't actually use their yeast calculator. Okay. Yeah. No, it's all quite straightforward. You enter the gravity of the beer you want to brew, how many litres, and it tells you how many billions of cells you need. Yep. And then you work your way down and it tells you, you know, the, the start. we're going to do a two litre starter today. Yeah, yeah. For the record, I've never done a yeast starter. Hmm. I'm going to. Every day's a school day? Yeah, that's it. You excited? Uh, yeah. <laughs> No, I am. I am. Mm. After reading, after reading the Graham Wheeler book, because you, you were saying that um, not to take that. I mean, the, the book was written. I don't know when it was written, but I think it was probably around about two thousand and nine. Okay. So do you think things have moved on? Is that what you were saying? That, yeah, that well, dried yeast is not quite as. I mean, yeah. It's a bit of an unfair comment now. Yeah, you sell a lot of dried yeast, don't you? And dried yeast has come on a lot. I don't think there's a lot of people use dried yeast. Oh, that's a great vision, dried yeast. Yeah. I mean, a lot of commercial breweries use dried yeast. The exact words were, "Packaged yeast leave a lot to be desired." Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. which is probably not quite as relevant now as it was 15 years ago. I don't, exactly, I don't think so. I think dried yeast has, has moved on massively, and a lot of commercial breweries yeah. use dried yeast exclusively, don't they? But all your beers have a starter, don't they? You don't, yeah. You don't, I, you don't really use dried, do you? Well, no, because I've got the equipment, and I, I kind of, I'm used so to That's a contradictory it. statement you just made, Dr. John. Yeah, I don't want to be critical of people who still use dried yeast and swear by it. I mean, I, I haven't used dried yeast since, like, my second brew. Okay. I can't really comment. All I can say is what I've read and heard online, that people, a lot of people think it's great. Who is that guy? <laughs> what was the camera pick that up? I'm going to smash the granny out. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so Dr. John, take us through the equipment we've got on display. Um, <laughs> it's quite a simple process, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, really simple, really, really simple. So we'll start off with the flask. This is called an Erl Erlenmeyer or a, uh, a conical flask. You've got a little tid. This is your one, isn't it? Yeah. The, the little tiddler. This ain't no size contest. <laughs> so I can get my big five litre one. Yeah, I mean, that massive one's got to be for a big, like, 20 gallon batch, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, well, uh, it's quite handy. The thing is, they um, look at the size Holy of that. cow! Okay, different flasks for different, different needs. needs. Yeah, they, they, they can produce a lot of Krausen, so they can really build up. So I like to, I've got it's a three meet, a three liter flask, but I don't really use more than two liters worth of, sort okay. of work in there. Uh, whereas with this, I mean, I don't know you might be able to get fifteen hundred. 
you know, one and a half litres. So that'd be there. good for what's the kind of size batch of an average strength ale. That would be all right for a 20 litre batch. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is as well, you can, the reason I've got that big one over there is I'll, I usually start off with a starter in this one. Yeah. Uh, do a two litre, two litre starter and then I'll do maybe a three, four litre starter in that one. Okay. And sort of build it up, you know, based on the, the, the volume of beer and brewing and the gravity of it. Yeah. So yeah, we've got the flask. We've obviously got a set of scales there. I've got a funnel, which I've cut the end off because it's quite handy to um, pour the dried malt extract in there or DME. Mm -hmm. uh, I cut the end off Custom because funnel. this is the stickiest stuff ever. If well, DME? Get, yeah, if you get this stuff on the... It, 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 yeah. Never touched it. It just, it kind of melts when it's introduced to like 20 degree... And DME obviously dried malt extract. Yeah. And they do that in light, yeah. medium, dark. I've only ever used light. Okay. Uh, even when I'm making a. So you start, start for what? Like a stout or something, I really? I, I don't think you need to use. Uh, personally, I've only ever used light malt extract, even okay. for a, when, when I'm making a starter for a, for a stout or a really dark beer. We've obviously got our little um, our hob. And just some basic yeast nutrient. I've brought that along because a lot of people use yeast nutrient in their starters, but I don't, again, I don't think you need to. I think okay. the fact that it's stirring constantly on there, it's, it's being whisked up constantly, you're introducing oxygen for the yeast to thrive on. I don't think you need yeast nutrient. What I generally go for, so for a 1037 gravity, which is generally what I go for on my yeast starter, mm -hmm. uh, you need 211 grams of DME. Okay, so I've got a way out. Uh, yeah, go for it. And this stuff's sticky. Yeah, very. But I've got a little scoop in there as well. Okay. Oh, it looks awful. Good stuff. Tastes good. Does it? Yeah. The problem is with this, because I've taken the end off my funnel, it doesn't stay in there as oh, well. It does taste good. It's good, isn't it? That's like the inside of a Malteser. <laughs> right, I'll see you guys later. I'm gonna tear the scale. A few moments later. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's quite messy. So I'm, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what to say or do. Am I weighing this right. out then? 211 grams. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. It's okay. really sticky. So, so you can put that straight on the hob? Uh, yeah. Well, we're, we're going to pour the water in. All right. Fortunately, I'm prepared. So all this is, I mean, normally at home, I'd just pour it straight out of the kettle. Can I get still on me? Can I, can I do this? Yeah, go on. So, <laughs> normally at home, I'd just do this straight out of the kettle into there so, and get it up to the, because there's a bit of DME in there, I'd get it up to the two-litre mark and then a little bit more, because that reduces down quite a lot. But here, we've got this spare little Earl and my flask of yours, yep. which I've already heated up. So we've got the two litres. inadequate. Of, it was boiling hot water. It's cooled down quite a bit now. So we can just tip this in here. And I do it this way, Timothy, because it can it pretty much then cleans your, fun, your funnel as you're pouring it in. Okay. Like that idea. Pretty smart, isn't it? Getting that straight in my mouth. And also on the inside of the flask, you can see it's going all around the outside. So all the DME that was around the outside is getting taken down into the solution. Okay. And that's smart, that is. Yeah, I like that. So now we can get rid of that. So now we can just get this party started. Let's crank it right up. You can tell when it's getting close to boiling because you start to see a few little bubbles appearing. It'll so you'll find when you're doing it, especially when you're at home on the hob, you don't want to get this because you've seen how sticky it is. It'll go everywhere and it gets really sticky. It's yeah, yeah. Nightmare to clean up. I can speak from experience on that. Yeah. So once it starts going, it'll properly go, um, and it's it quite often boils over. Okay. And it just goes everywhere. Once it's had the initial boil over, it'll then kind of simmer a lot better. You'll see okay. what I mean when you when you when you do it. We haven't mentioned the fact that we've got our stirrer as well. Oh, magnetic stone. Yeah, yeah, we'll introduce that. In Should we get the whirl whipper out? Yeah, go on. But I can't stress that point enough. When that goes, it properly goes. So okay. you need to be keeping an eye on it. And we've got it on full heat we, at the moment. We're done with the scales now, aren't we? Yeah. We need, we've got it on full heat at the moment. But as soon as it gets close to boiling, we want to turn that right down. Oh, it'll it'll go mental. <laughs> right. So this is one you... So we need to talk about, yeah, the fact that we've got a magnetic stirrer now. Because that's an essential part of it. Yes. Because the yeast needs to be in suspension, doesn't it? Yes. And the reason it needs to be in suspension is otherwise it just solidifies It'll the bottom. settle and yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, this is one you made yourself. Yep. Um, yeah, this, I made this a few years ago. Out of, this is actually a box that a load It looks of, really good. <laughs> this, this was a little box that a load of screws came in. And I just bought all the little parts. It's got a little 12 volt CPU fan that I bought right. on eBay. Well, the contents of this box, you laugh, but that cost me, I don't know, like six, seven quid to make. Right, yeah. You know that? <coughs> Uh, and then it's got the little controller here, which is, like a, pounds. Which is like a dimmer. Yeah. Like this existing 12 volt transformer in the shed. All right. So I bought that, bought right, that. Put that piece of crap away. We're going to use I'm the very, work whipper. I'm very proud of yeah, it. Yeah, great. That's great. But we're going to use the work whipper from Kegland. Super light, nice and compact. No getting angry and messing around at home. And then you get the little lozenge, the magnetic bar, I guess, that just sits in there. Where, where have you got this lozenge thing from? Is that well, it looks like a lozenge. Is that what people call them? It looks like a suppository. <laughs> when, you leave it, when you leave it to the pro. <laughs> it looks, it, all right, it's got, fine. It's called a stir bar. I actually just introduced the equipment at the beginning, which you did not do, and now I'm doing you it. You've got a big problem. I'm I? probably going to be brewing. You haven't used that as a suppository, have you? 
No. <laughs> right. All right, so yeah, now we're just waiting for this to get up to a boil. Then we're going to let it boil for 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Depending on how much time I've got at home. Sometimes. Are we going to need a thermometer for when we get it down to... Yeah, we're not going to need that temp. for a while yet. Okay. Right. Um, What's good for the people at home to know the fact yeah, that... Yeah. What equipment we're going to need. Yeah, yeah. Handheld thermometer. So, yeah, so we're going to get this up to a nice boil, steady rolling boil for 10 to, to 15 minutes. Okay. Then once it hits boiling point, we can start to crash it. These flasks are great. They're borosilate, however you pronounce that. We all know that. You know the word, don't you? It's got it written on there. I don't know how to pronounce it, though. In the lab, we, uh, we use these quite a lot. Uh, you've done a really good job, though. And they're... <laughs> what did I say? What was the word? Borosilic. <laughs> I think I said borosilic, but I didn't want to say it again. Um, but they're great because you can, you can go from boiling temperature on there into like freezing cold water straight away. And oh, okay. it, it won't, Without it won't crack the glass. Yeah, okay. exactly. So really, really handy. Um, right, let's get it up to a boil and continue from there then. Cool. For this hole. I mean, some kind of sort of heat repellent gloves would be good, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah. As opposed to some Guinness bar towel. Exactly. Yeah. We, we, at home, I have <coughs> a very nice pair of oven gloves, which I'll probably use normally. Here we go, look. Oh, it. because it's funneled, I guess. It's just going to all yeah, channel yeah, all the exactly. way up and. Right. Gotcha. I think that it's because of just the, the fact that it's hot. Yeah, yeah, it is. These really retain okay. heat, don't they? That's why. Uh, I prefer to do it on gas at home. Anyway, so I'll keep him bubbling for 10 to 15 minutes and then mm. we'll be back with the action. A few moments later. Um, these are obviously the packs that come with the yeast. Um, whenever I order new yeast, I just I hold on to these and lob them in my freezer because they're quite handy when yeah, you want to chill your, yeast, uh, your starter down. It saves on ice cubes as well. Yeah, you and obviously if you're buying wet yeast, you will get those frozen packs. Oh, yeah. So yeah, you just take your straight supplier. out. And straight in it goes, look. No crack. You imagine it went now on camera. So we can just Do we want to put the foil cap on yet or not? Uh, I normally put on a little. Good question. Have we got foil? Have we got any foil? Uh, no, not here. But I can, I can get some at home. So yeah, now while this is cooling down, we'll put foil on while it went. We'll put foil on once it's on the stir plate. But while it's cooling down like this, because you want it to breathe a little bit. A little bit of sanitizer on the tissue. That's just um, kitchen towel, and then leave that on the top so it can breathe. While it's cooling down, because it's so hot in there, it might dry that out a little bit. Just every now and then, just give it a little squirt like that. About half an hour, wait for it to get to pitching temp, which is generally, what, 19 to 23-ish degrees. Um, once there... We can oh, it could be more than that, because we're using Hornindel. Yeah, using yes, so, yeah, no good point, actually. Yeah, what's this going to be up, up to, like, 41 degrees, yeah. or something ridiculous? Yeah. yeah, 35 degrees. I mean, but normally it would be that standard is pitching temp, yeah. 20 to 25. Exactly. This is the first time I've done a yeast starter for Kvite yeast. Um, you happy with my pronunciation on that? Yeah, not bad, not bad. A few moments later... It's been chilling for, what do you reckon, 20, 25 minutes? Yep, not that long, really. Um, we're just going to take a temperature reading, see how cold it is. So we want it, what do we want it for? Like nice 20, and sanitised oh, yeah, temp probe. 20 to 35, isn't it, we want? 28.4. Happy? Yeah. Oh, very happy. I'm very happy with that. I'm, I'm very, very happy. <laughs> so yeah, we can get rid of that. Shall we put the yeast in the sanitizer? Um, yeah, yeah, good plan. I always like to do a little hole because it's easy to pour. So, yeah, that's it. So, try and make a spout Stinks. out of that. Let's have a sniff. Oh, it does. Huh. We good? Yeah, yeah. This is where you get it everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, probably. It's very pale, isn't it? It's like yeast. Mm. That's that stuff. It's very pale. <laughs> How's that grab you? Yeah, good. Mm. Excited about seeing the work whipper in action. Yeah, yeah. And then. These have all been sanitised, haven't they? Yep. Where's the stir bar? Can we get the bar then? I can't find it. Is it even in there? Have you put it in there? Yeah, no, I got it, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> God. Slippery little bugger. <laughs> Keep slipping out of my hand. Right, we got it. Ready? Yep. Plop. In he goes. And that, my friend, is pretty much it. We, we just need to put a little foil cap on, sanitised foil cap, press it down. With that, with my homemade work whacker, it takes ages to try and locate. Trademark. It takes ages to try and locate the magnet and get the stir bar on there. Yeah. As soon as I put that on there, I can hear it engage with the the, the stir bar. Do you want to turn it on? You like that? Yeah, damn right I do. It's my work whipper. You're gonna turn it up to eleven these, straight away. These have got quite a lot. Of, these have got quite a lot of torque. You so. crank it to eleven. There's the vortex. Oh. Like that. It's just, gotta, it's just yeah, enough to perfect. keep it in suspension, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, is that about right? Yeah, yeah, nice. 
There you go. So that's probably at the 25% mark. Yeah, yeah. So this yeast from Amiga, and it does vary depending on the manufacturer of the yeast. Amiga, we've just found out, they have 200 billion cells in there. So from the date of manufacture, that would have been 200 billion. Mm -hmm. Imperial yeast is the same, that's 200 billion. Uh, I know that White Weiss is 100, isn't it? Yeah, and White Labs as well are okay. uh, both 100 for their standard uh, liquid yeast. It's worth making the point, though, that what, from its manufactured date, which is why the manufactured date is quite useful, mm. yeast starts to die off, doesn't it? Yeah, really, exactly. As soon as it's packaged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it loses its, its they call it viability. Yeah. So this yeast here that we've got today is exactly one month old, Okay. Um, which gives us a 76% viability which means because it would have been 200 billion cells in there. Yep. So that now means that there's 152 billion cells of yeast in there, roughly. Okay. Um, we've obviously done a two-litre starter with a gravity of 1037, mm -hmm. um, which means that in about... I, I normally leave it on there for sort of uh, 36 to 48 hours, yep. so a day and a half to two days. Um, so, so in a day and a half to two days' time, that should give us roughly 448 billion cells. Okay. So we've gone from... So it's almost two and a half times. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Cool. And this, the, a standard pack, with, I mean, it says on the back, will inoculate 19 litres up to 1070 OG. Mm. So if that's gone up two and a half, then, you know, that, that's, gonna, that, that's good for um, 50 litres, just yeah. under 50 litres up to 1070. So that's, yeah, a big, yeah, yeah. that's a big step up. Mm. It's quite an easy process, isn't it, as well? It is. Mm. Right, so we'll interject some footage of this in... A couple of days time so you can see the progress mm. um, but that is how you propagate your own yeast and yeah. create a healthy yeast starter easy as that yeah so get pitching some nice healthy liquid yeast people hope you found that interesting from the doc from the <laughs> from the learned doctor <laughs> you're not a learned doctor you're a bald-headed <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so thanks for watching. We'll see you in another video soon. Cheng Kui. Chin Topic. Huh? Chin Topic. There you go. Say Chin Topic. No, yeah, it fun. wasn't even. What's that beer taking the edge off me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm Raider Shark no matter what. No, listen.